Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now we're good with the accessory belt drive system, let's turn our attention to the timing system. And I got one right here to show you. The timing system starts down here at the crankshaft. Now the crankshaft drives the timing belt and it goes up here through a tensioner. This one's a hydraulic tensioner, you may have a manual tensioner, and then it comes up and it goes over the camshaft. Now the camshaft is the big pulley, but it's because it turns half the speed of the crankshaft. And then it comes down here and it goes through an idler pulley, and then you see here it actually drives a water pump. Now think about that for a minute. It drives a water pump. So if your water pump's leaking, it could get on the belt, you could have problems. One other thing, you know, this is a difficult job. You have to tear the whole front of the engine down in order to get to this timing belt. So you can get you a kit like this. I highly recommend that you go ahead and get a water pump and timing belt, whether you need one or not, because over time your water pump's gonna fail and it's gonna start to leak. And if it leaks on the belt, it may jump one or two teeth. You could end up with catastrophic engine damage. Got a few engines over here to show you how it's actually configured. This one right here is a single overhead cam engine. Once again, down at the crankshaft, this is a manual little adjuster right here. It comes up through one camshaft, comes all the way over to the other camshaft, and then it goes down back to the crank pulley. Now this one's a little unique. And why this one's a little unique? Because this one's a dual overhead cam. But not only that, this is a 3.4 liter, and it employs an actual chain down here that drives the intermediate shaft that drives the timing belt. And you can see it here. This is the intermediate shaft. Then the timing belt comes up, and it comes through the tensioner. The tensioner is located right here. Then it goes through two camshafts. This one right here is the exhaust camshaft, and then the intake camshaft comes over a little idler pulley to the intake and then over to the exhaust camshaft. Rides back to an idler pulley and back to the intermediate shaft. Now, that's a good look at timing belts, but we need to get you out in the garage and show you how to do one, and we're gonna do that next. Let's take a look at a timing belt in action. Now, what does a timing belt do? Well, it creates a choreographed dance between the camshaft, the valves, and the piston. And I can show it to you right here in our trainer. What's happening is the timing belt's going around, and when the timing belt's going around, hence the name timing, it's keeping the engine in time, the camshaft to the crankshaft. And you can see the piston's going up and down, and the valves are all moving at the right time. The intake's opening, the exhaust's opening, and everything's going just as it should go. Now, I wanna talk about two types of engines. There's an interference engine, and an interference engine is where the valve will hit the piston if it's not in time. And there's a freewheeling engine, which it wouldn't matter. The valves have enough clearance. But if you have an interference engine, and most of us do on today's cars, you gotta be careful. Because you may be running at 3,000 RPM, and that timing belt breaks, that's gonna be catastrophic damage. Now what I'm gonna do, I don't recommend you do it home, but I wanna show it to you. I'm just gonna reach over here, and I'm gonna cut this timing belt clean off this motor. Well, what happened? Just took it out of time. So what's gonna happen is the piston comes up, one of these valves may be open. So what's gonna go on is the piston comes up, if this valve was in the open position, whammo, it's gonna hit the piston. Once it hits the piston, something has to give. The valve's gonna bend, the rod's gonna bend, something's gonna break. And you may end up with something like this. This actually broke the timing belt and the valve was stuck in the piston. Well, we cut that belt, so we need to head over and time this engine. Well, because we cut the belt off, we need to retime this engine. But before we do, I'll show you a few components that the timing belt runs. Down here is the crankshaft, and then the crankshaft, it comes up here to the water pump. Well, we said earlier, it may drive the water pump. On this model, it does. All the work taking all these components off the front, go ahead and change the water pump out while you're down there. Then you come up here through a tensioner. This is a manual tensioner, and then it comes up and it drives the actual camshaft right here. But before we put our belt on, we need to do a couple things. The first thing I want to do is loosen up the tensioner. Remember, we cut our belt off, so we need to get that loose where we can put the belt on. Then I'm going to come down here, and I already put the crankshaft in time. You see these two marks right here? The crankshaft has to be in time with the camshaft. So I'm going to take my belt, and I'm going to work it on the crankshaft first. Once I get it in the crankshaft, make sure it's in the teeth of the crankshaft, and also make sure you look at your tooth. Some are round, some are square, make sure they match the pulleys. Come over to the water pump, I'll get it on the water pump, and then I'm going to come around the tensioner. But before I time the camshaft, I have to make sure that these marks are in order. Check your service manual, find some information to find out where these timing marks are, because we talked about that choreographed dance between the piston and the valves, the camshaft and the crankshaft, this is what's causing it. I come around here, 
and then just slip it on, make sure it stays, make sure your marks are in order. Then you wanna come over, put a little tension on it and go ahead and tighten up your tensioner. Now, the most important thing you can do after you get it on there is turn the engine over by hand. Turn it over at least 720 degrees, four stroke cycle, because you're turning it over by hand, you have no chance of bending the valves. If all of a sudden it stops, it's out of time. You're hitting one of those valves. Welcome back to Tech Garage. As we promised, it's all about the motor oil. Now, oil serves a few functions. Cools, lubricates, seals, and it provides a thin film between the moving parts. And I have a cool demonstrator here to show you exactly what it does. Right here in the crankshaft to the connecting rods, thin film of oil. Between the main bearings and the actual block itself, thin film of oil, all the way up here to the camshaft and the cam bearings. The oil galleries have to carry it up there and create a thin film of oil between all those moving parts. Also pressurizes in these followers down to the lifters. It's important in the engine. Now, cool little demonstration right here. Can actually take these plates and I can show you what I mean. If I rub these plates together, you can hear that. That scraping noise. And if I just take a little bit of oil and I put it on these plates, spread it around, and now it's gone. What happened, it is creating a thin film of oil. That's the oil's job. Also, there's viscosity ratings of oil. You need to check your manufacturer service manual for the right viscosity for your vehicle, but viscosity is basically the thickness of the oil, the ability for it to flow. Now, I have a cool demonstration right here. I have some 80 weight oil right here, and I have some 5W30. And if I take these balls and I drop them in the beaker, you're gonna see that the 80 weight's not gonna travel very fast, and the actual 5W30 is gonna go real fast. Now, the 80 weight's barely getting through there because the oil's thicker. The 5W30, it's going right down. That's why it's so important to consult your owner's manual for the oil you're using.